Another viewer question. And this time the question is from Sherman Soberon. And Sherman writes Chuck, thanks for this update. Inspiring me to try leaf propagation. Have a few questions. Have you experienced frost over where you are? If so, did you have to protect any of your plants? What types of frost protection do you recommend? I'm curious which plants required protection and which didn't. Do succulents generally survive frost if they're more mature? Those are great questions, Sherman, and and I've had a bit of experience dealing with it. I had this exact same questions before. I got a bit of insight from someone who lives in the colder parts of Victoria. And as some of you already know, I live in an inner suburb of Melbourne. So this friend, he lived out west in Ballarat where where the average temperature is even lower than down here in Melbourne. He volunteers and works for the Botanic Gardens of Ballarat. And if you've ever been to any botanic garden, you will know that they have the plants just out in the open. And no protection unless, except for a few maybe in, in some hot houses, greenhouses. But for the most part, the plants are just exposed to the elements. So that means they're uncovered all year round and they're exposed to the summer the harshest parts of summer and the coldest parts of winter so as I said I asked I asked this question and, and he gave me a few tips which I now practice in my garden so there are generally three things that I have to take note of the first bit is when creating your garden bed make sure to mount them give, give them a bit of drop off in front of the plants what that means is Let's say this is your plant. Make sure to mount your garden bed in such a way that there's a trench in front of it. And what that does is that the drop off in front of it, it directs the air airflow onto the plant so that ensures that the plant is well ventilated. And during winter, your main enemy, aside from the frost and the cold of course, is fungal rot. And fungus thrives in a moist and humid environment. So give them that airflow, give them that ventilation, then they'll do fine. Otherwise, of course, you could always, you know, treat them with antifungals well in advance before you get those string of uh, humid days. Basically, the first step is to mitigate the growth of fungus and the best way to do that is to give them airflow. Now, number two, the second method is to plant them at an angle. So, let's say, you're doing this Echeveria imbricata. Instead of planting them upright, plant them slightly at an angle. And this is easier if you have mounted your area because you can just plant them on the face. And the reason this technique is relevant is because not many people realize this, but frost is fluid. It's not really, it's not entirely solid. So it has a tendency to slide off. So every bit helps. Doing it this way allows you, allows you to take advantage of gravity to have the frost slide off. The less time that the frost gets to stay on the leaves, then the less chance of getting any frost damage. And lastly, the third technique is to use some frost cloth and this is it. You would find this at your local big box store or maybe hardware supplies or maybe garden supplies shops. And uh, frost cloths are generally, you know, they're thin probably see through and the way to use this is you just spread them over the plants just you know, put it on top and what this does is instead of the frost forming on the plants itself they form on this cloth so that means that your plants will actually be exposed to frost or at least uh, frost won't get to them because because the frost would be forming on this cloth first so that's a third advice that he gave me so you could choose to do all of them or maybe a combination of some and I think the surefire way is to use frost cloth because in addition to shielding them, um, having, having the cloth on top of the plants, it creates some sort of a humid and warmer environment, microclimate, because you know, the heat gets trapped within. And make sure that you only put this on the plants at night, so you have to remove them in the morning. And the way I use it is I I use forecast so I have a, so I look at my phone, look at forecast, 
So I wait for any frost alerts. So if my weather app tells me that there's a chance of frost tonight, so during sunset, I would start you know, laying frost cloth over my plants. And I would remove them the next morning because they would still need the light for photosynthesis. Although this does allow sunlight to pass through, I'd still rather have them you know, uncovered and well ventilated because the thing about frost cloth, and I mentioned it a while ago, is it creates a humid environment and fungus loves that. So, no, no. And to answer some of your other questions, Yes, different plants have different tolerances. Uh, I find that aeoniums do not generally do well below freezing. Echeverias, they can take up to negative 5 degrees Celsius and below that, the damage would be irreparable. There are some plants that can handle cold very well. An example would be sempervivums, but unfortunately, I have little experience in that regard because our winters are mild and I haven't had much uh, chance to, to play around with various types of plants just to see if they can tolerate the frost. So I think this is something that so people who are living in colder zones than I am and you're also right in your thinking about the mature plants. Mature plants have a better chance of surviving the frost. They can take more damage compared to the younger plants. I am lucky to live in a place where the winters are mild so I have never had to think about creating a greenhouse. It could get expensive trying to get plants under grow lights and frankly no grow light or at least it would be prohibitively expensive to get enough light, artificial light, just to simulate the sun. Your best bet is to have them out in the sun, sun's the temperature because ah, cold is a problem. So in my end all I need to do is to create a warm microclimate. Here's another insight that I might be able to give you. And have you ever noticed in nature, let's say in the South Pole, take penguins for instance, they all huddle together to keep themselves warm. And you can do the same in your garden by having your plants close together. That way they can all trap some heat and warm up each other. So while it might be too cold outside, they are creating a warm microclimate amongst themselves. This allows you to, to expand their threshold, you know? So that's something you can you could probably do. Again, and I might defer to the others on your question about which plants are frost hardy. I guess let's see what they have to say. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.